Chinese story of a dispute between two women, each claiming that she's the mother of a small boy. The dispute is settled by drawing a chalk circle on the floor and putting the boy inside it. Whoever can pull him out is to be recognized as the real mother. But one of the women refuses to pull. There have been several modern versions of this story. In some, the woman who refuses to pull is the boy's real mother. The other woman only wants him for her own advantage. The great German playwright Bertolt Brecht saw a play in that version as early as 1925 and the story stuck in his mind. Another story that he'd been thinking about for a long time was of a very unusual kind of judge. Not some sober official figure giving judgment by the law books, but a rough, apparently disreputable man deciding cases by what he feels about the people involved. Brecht had to leave Germany when Hitler and the Nazis came to power. He lived in exile in several countries and had several goes at making a play out of one or other of these stories. Eventually, he linked the two stories together to make the Caucasian chalk circle. His judge, the man who will set the test of pulling the boy from the chalk circle, is the, the rough character who makes all his decisions on very unusual grounds. Eventually, in 1944, in the United States, he wrote the play in very much the form which you're going to see. The biggest difference he made from the versions which others had written is that the woman who refuses to pull the boy is not his natural mother, but a poor woman who has been looking after him since she found him abandoned. There's one big effect of this change. Most versions of the story center on which woman has the better claim to the child. Brecht's version puts the question the other way round. His trial scene is about the child's claim to the better mother, to the woman who will really look after him. It is at this point in his development of the story that Brecht introduced a third element which you'll see in the play's first scene. During the Second World War, Hitler's armies had invaded Russia and had eventually been defeated by the Russian army. 1945 saw the beginning of a period of reconstruction there. This is shown in the play by a dispute between two groups of farmers about the use of a particular valley in Soviet Georgia. Should it be used, as in the past, for goats to graze, or should it be planted with fruit trees? The two groups struggle for the valley as the two women struggled for the child. Brecht set his play in the Caucasus Mountains. That's why it's called the Caucasian Chalk Circle. Earlier versions had been set in other places. Before the argument about the valley is finally settled, both groups of farmers listen to a singer who tells them the old story about the struggle for the child. As it happens, the play ends with the singer supporting the fruit growers. Yet the point, as always in Brecht, is not so much the decision itself, but how people can learn to arrive at it. What tests, what values should they apply? His purpose in all his plays was to dramatize a, a difficult situation and then show the very different ways in which it could be looked at and understood. He was more interested, he often said, in people arguing about it, thinking for themselves after they'd seen the performance, than in any particular conclusion which the play or its characters themselves arrived at. Yet, of course, he was putting in his own ideas about how decisions of this kind, uh, d difficult decisions, should be made. For many people, what settles disputes is the existing law, and especially the law of property. People who own things have, by a legal title, an absolute right to them. And it can be argued that they can then do whatever they like with what they own. But suppose this property is land. It can be used for everybody's benefit or exploited for just a few. Uh, suppose even more that this property is a right over some other human being then the real question might be not who has the legal right, but who would be best for the person concerned. 
Brecht doesn't often argue that the answers to these questions are easy. He has his own answers, but the main thing is for the people concerned to think it out for themselves. In the dispute about the valley, the case is put by experts, but there's a real problem because it's a choice between two reasonable cases, not just between obviously good and obviously bad. The dispute about the child is different, but even there the arguments are put. The rich woman, who's the legal mother, may have abandoned the boy, but if she now gets him back, she'll give him lots of possessions. Against that, the poor woman can say only that she brought him up and that he knows her. We're asked to think only of what would be best for the child. Bert Brecht was a socialist writer. He thought the meaning of justice was to give everyone a good life and that things should be owned by people who would use them wisely for everyone's benefit. But of course, in the real world, it would be a very unusual judge who would put that idea of justice above the laws actually in force. In the Caucasian chalk circle, the dispute about the child is in a way only possible in a story settled by what most people would say is not a proper judge at all, only the voice of some other idea of justice, which gets through for a time when the usual order of things has been disturbed. It's this which explains the method of the play. Just imagine, Brecht is saying, just imagine what would happen if all our problems and questions were suddenly open for discussion, not already determined by some previous law or title, but open questions for people to argue about. He then puts in the different arguments, but it's the story, the songs, the figure of the chalk circle, the hurrying action and the shouting that take us beyond our particular circumstances and excite us into looking at a kind of problem that comes up all the time. What is really best for people? What are the real values to draw on when we try to make decisions? Many of us will enjoy the performance simply because it's lively and colourful. Brecht was always careful about that. If it wasn't exciting, we wouldn't bother to think about it with so many other things on our minds. But then that's where it gets us. As we watch the two women holding the boy's arms as he stands in that chalk circle under the gaze of that apparently disreputable judge, what do we really want to happen? And beyond that, what do we think would be most likely to happen in real life as we've got used to it? If what we want to happen is never likely to happen, except in a play, what should we do? Not about the play, but about the world 